Griffball. All right, so as we are so graciously introduced, we are from Griffball Hub. My name is Goose Cheka. I'm the content and community manager there. And I'm Cal, I'm the administrator at the site. So we'll go on to our next slide there. So Griffball, kind of where it all began. Yeah, so Griffball was originally uh, created in the, uh, December of 2007. Uh, Rooster Teeth was doing a video for Bungie introducing the heroic map pack in Halo 3. And one of the new maps on there was Foundry, which Bungie introduced as the very first Forge World type environment where they created it specifically for players to create their own maps. And one of the gags that was cut from the Heroic Map Pack video was a gag about Griff creating the laziest game type in the world, where he would take the flag, walk two feet, plant it, and win. So after that gag was cut, they still had the court around the Rooster Teeth office, and Bernie was playing around with it, and he ended up creating a game type where there was a bomb in the center, and then a 4v4 melee, kind of a uh, Halo Rugby variant. So uh, this is a quote from Bernie, of when he was introducing, uh, he was giving an interview with Bungie and telling where Griffball came from. And it came from, the name came from a season four episode of Red vs. Blue, where Sarge was taking pot shots at Griff, and he bragged that this was the best game since Griffball. And this was before the heroic map pack came out, this was back in Halo 2, and they always wondered what Griffball would be like. So when Bernie made this game type, and they made the carrier turn orange to better identify him on the map, like, oh, that matches up perfectly. We can call it Griffball. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he was good in uh, uh, the, the first, the original eight tournament. Yeah, he was good when the only people playing were Rooster Teeth staff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There we go. So then there was Halo 3 Griffball. Uh, obviously, call, it was catch the disease was the catchphrase, and they created the American Griffball League of America. And <laughs> yeah. And uh, so again, it started in December of 2007 with the original eight tournament. As you can guess, there were originally eight teams in this tournament. Cannonball won said tournament. Then there was Spring League 08, which had about 100 teams. And then there was Summer League 08, which is the largest Griffball League to date that had over 250 teams. So uh, it started catching on. Bungie noticed this awesome thing, and they put it into their hopper, and you suddenly had Griffball double experience weekends. And so for about four days, you could go in and play Griffball and get insane amounts of credits. Um, we spent many, many hours doing that. Yeah, our goal every month when the double XP weekend for Griffball rolled around is to get 500 experience points to win 250 games so we could get to the next level of general every single time. That's the only way I got my 50. Oh, yeah, yeah. They ranked <laughs> Griffball one weekend, and that's how you know, we were able to be generals in Halo 3. Mm -hmm. So it was wildly popular for a long time. The Rooster Teeth guys, they did videos. Um, American Dream. Is anybody in here from American Dream? Remember American Dream? No. All right, well, they had a, a video that they actually did that had a, like a training, getting ready for Griff Ball, and it was, it was a lot of fun and really interactive. And that really carried over into Halo Reach, which is our next slide here. So Halo Reach Griff Ball came out in September. And 2010. 2010, yes. <laughs> And it was very, very different. Uh, with the addition of armor abilities, it was, uh, we, we kind of ended up with two different kind of game types. Yeah, we had uh, the basic Griffball game type, which is very similar to Halo 3 Griffball. Uh, we have that in Reach, we call it Vanilla Griffball, just to get the idea that it's the basic level. Uh, you have hammer, swords, bomb in the middle, whole nine yards, no armor abilities. It plays very similar to Halo 3 Griffball. The other game type that we're really big fans of were uh, Griffball Dash, where we're able to throw in some of those armor abilities so that you can, when you're holding the bomb, the runner can sprint with it, the runner can roll with the bomb, you have tanks flying all over the court, doing their evade and doing their sprint, and it's uh, a slightly bigger court that we run it on, but it's a ton of fun and it's very hectic. And uh, we also have a permanent Griffball playlist now that when Reach came out, uh, Bernie and Bungie were asking Griffball Hub to put together the maps and game types for the permanent playlist in Reach. And so we put together Vanilla Griffball, Griffball Dash, uh, there's also Jetpack Griffball, Griffball in three dimensions, and we also have Blard Ball, which, as you might guess, is Griffball with Elites. Oh, elites yeah. yeah. So now, if you, anytime you boot up Reach, you can go into the Griffball playlist. Uh, we update, we've been updating it every few months, putting in new courts or trying out new game types in there. Um, so any day, day or night, grab your team, you can hop in there, uh, you can get tons of credits. Oftentimes there are uh, bonuses, you know, if you have to win games very fast or anything like that, 
uh, helps get your uh, challenges in Brickball as well. And one of the most exciting things that we're doing with Reach Brickball, Brickball <laughs> is uh, we have what we call Wednesday Night Griff Brawl. I'm afraid. Duck. Goose? Okay. <laughs> uh, Wednesday Night Griff Brawl, which is basically us live streaming uh, some Griffle matches. And we were inspired by RTX because at RTX we had the amazing opportunity to actually play Griff Ball on that giant eSports screen in the stage that they had, just like real sports and real games. So it was very cool. Um, and we were really impressed. Uh, we came out the first day and the entire stadium area, the seating was filled and there were people sitting in the aisles and there were two or three rows deep of people just wanting to watch people play Griff Ball. And we didn't know what was going on. We're like, well, what are you guys here for? They're like, Griff Ball. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, then the next day we had a free play. So people could come up and just play Griff Ball on the stage. And a similar thing happened where the audience was not, not as full, but there was a line that went all the way down one side of the convention center and all the way down the following side wall. Yeah, it was funny. There, uh, Tex, when another Griff Ball hub person, he was locked up there. He was there early and he saw this giant line of people stretching all around the uh, show floor at RTX, and he was like, oh yeah, Jack's on stage. You guys are there to see Jack, right? No, we're here for Griff Ball. <laughs> oh, okay. So we were, we were definitely taken by surprise and how much fun, <laughs> how much fun people, um, hey, he was a commissioner, so he's, he is Griff Ball. He's part you know, of the family. He's part of the family. Uh, we were really impressed and, and surprised by how positive people responded to it, that they cheered when someone got hammered in the face, and then they, you know, raged when there was a, a bomb stop, or, and they were really, really into it, and we had a couple people ask us, is there any place that we can actually watch Griff Ball happen? And we said, there will be, and so we did, and it's been a lot of fun. It's very cool because, uh, like uh, Cal mentioned, Tex, he actually does the voiceover for it, so there's live commentary of the games. So if you're not a super familiar Griff Ball person, he does explain, hey, this team has been in for this many seasons, and this team's been in for that many seasons, and oh, he just pulled off that move. And uh, it's, it's really fun, because then there's also the live chat box where you get to interact with other Griff Ballers. So whether you're new to the sport or you're a hammer-hardened veteran, you know, you could really just get in on the action, and that's just a really, really fun way that we've been engaging the community. Yes, yeah, so that's every Wednesday night we have our Wednesday night Griff Ball. Oddly enough. Yes. And it's something we're definitely looking forward to going into um, in Halo 4 which is our next exciting bit there. So Halo 4 Griff Ball, did anybody see the PAX Halo 4 Griff Ball reveal? All right, a couple, yay, that's exciting. So at PAX Prime last month, they announced that Griff Ball would be in Halo 4, not a game type that the community would have to create, but they actually made it, and it's awesome. And we had the amazing opportunity, they pulled us in and asked us to actually give them feedback, which was, I think kind of blew our brains out a little bit. Um, never in a million years did we ever expect 343 to actually ask Griff Ballers, much less us, to, you know, act as professionals and, and give them feedback. Yeah, that was a great thing that 343 is actually reaching out to the Griff Ball community and able to, we're able to give them a few people to bring in and test out the game type and help build it for Halo 4. That what we see in Halo 4 is something that isn't just in-house in 343, but has real feedback from real Griff Ball fans. Yeah, and it was, I mean, one, as a, as a fan of Halo in general, I was ecstatic to get pulled into 343 and go behind the, the frosty glass doors. That was very cool. And then to actually sit down and be seen as an expert was, was very unusual because they told us, oh, well, we want to show off a couple of tricks. We've been trying for two months to get a trick. We haven't gotten it to work. What can you guys do? So they sat us down and two others, and within five minutes, we had every trick they wanted to do done <laughs> and, and figured out for them. So uh, during the panel, we got to go up there and actually demo it. Absolutely nothing went like we thought it would, um, especially me unplugging the controller. And that, that was classic. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was my bad. But it was uh, some of the, the biggest changes. One, you can throw the ball. Like if you've seen the oddball toss, you know, the long bomb, you can actually throw it like it's a grenade which is really, really exciting um, because in Griffball we've kind of been doing that since Halo 3 where you launch the runner and the runner at the height of the jump chucks the ball as hard it as it can. It just lets go, it just hits X. Yeah, yeah, and we do that in reach as well, but now it's like legitimately you have a quarterback position and you can, you can throw the ball, which is really, really exciting. I think it's going to definitely pick up the pace of the game. And a lot of people who are like, man, I hate Griffball, Griffball sucks, blah, uh, they saw the toss and all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, that looks really cool, I want to play it. So we're really excited to kind of engage that new possible fan group there. Yeah, when you play Halo 4 Griff Ball, you throw the ball, you, hit the, you throw the ball just by hitting the grenade toss button. 
So it's just the exact same motion as if you're tossing a grenade, and you see it in the oddball demo they showed as well. That's a really nice way. You just have to um, still be a little accurate because there is auto catch turned on in Halo 4 Griff Ball. So whenever you're close to the ball, your character is going to automatically grab it. So if you throw the ball to your teammate across the court, if they're near the ball, they're going to be grabbing it. But that also means the opposition can also pick it off and also have an interception. interception. Yes. Which will be really, really exciting. Yes. The other way to get the ball around the court in Halo 4 Griff Ball would be with the hammer. There's a hammer pass you can do where you go up to the ball as long as you're not too close, so you automatically pick it up. You're able to take a few steps back. You can swing your hammer at it and launch the ball around the court. And it, it looks, it's exactly like a pinball game. Like the, the ball just goes flying. And we've already dubbed it, it's called the Franklin. We've copyrighted that after Kevin Franklin, the 343 developer who actually is responsible for Grip Ball being in Halo 4. So we have all built shrines to him in our homes. <laughs> and uh, we're called Franklin's Freaks. And <laughs> the trade off you do with, between passing the ball and passing it with the hammer, though, is that when you pass it with your arm, it's more accurate, but it's slower, so the other team can more easily intercept it. Uh, when you hit it with your hammer, though, it's going to be much, much faster, but much less accurate as well. And I'm sure as you can see from the image, even though it's not the best, is that it's not an assault bomb anymore. It is actually the same thing that they use in Oddball, and it's this sphere thing, this, this kind of cagey spherical thing, and inside, you can't really tell, but it is a, a ghost face. And since it's a forerunner, forerunner object, whenever you assassinate someone with the ball, they disintegrate, and it's a lot of fun. It's even more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard Bernie on a podcast a couple weeks ago mention that he wish he knew about the new Oddball before they ordered thousands of copies of the Halo 3, Halo Reach replica. The, so. the Griffball plushies? Yeah. yeah. The classic, the classic yes. plushie now. Now they're like classic Coke. Yes. And this is like real Coke. They're yes. Vintage. Vintage, Vintage. yes. Vintage. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the other things that's really exciting is um, the physics are real. Like they're real physics. They actually happen. Oh, I guess we're sorry. It's okay. We're good. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so the, the physics are, are real. They make sense. <laughs> they, you know, if you do something, it, it will good. actually look like it's meant to look. It's not going to be weird. Like when you hit the ball, the closer you get, the more power you get. When you aim at it with the hammer, the harder you're going to hit it. And, you know, based on the way that you swing your hammer, it's the direction it goes. So the, the physics are real, and that's very exciting. Um, <clears throat> there's also... Um, we haven't figured out the launch yet, but rest assured, it, I'm sure we'll be making it come back somehow. Yes. Uh, the sword snatch as well oh, is yeah, a new that. thing that they've added into it. Because there's auto pickup on the ball when you're close to it, and in Griff Ball you have a choice when you have a runner coming to you. You can either hit him with the hammer, which is not always the most effective because he gets bounced around, or you can stab him with the sword, which is usually your best option. Or her. Or her, yes. Thank you. Of course. But if you stab them with the sword in Halo 4, you're going to be automatically grabbing the bomb when you kill them. So you're not going to have to chase it around, you're not going to have to look on the ground for it, just stab with the sword instantly, mm -hmm. you're carrying the ball. And I think what we're most excited about is that this is really going to speed up the game. It's all about getting more interactions. With Halo 4 in general is all about getting more interactions, getting into more fights, getting into more confrontations, and speeding up the game. One of the things that's currently on there for Halo 4, or for Halo 4 Griff Ball, is that the bomb doesn't explode. And we've ha already heard some feedback uh, complaining that Griff doesn't die, this isn't Griff Ball, you're ruining Griff Ball. The point of Griff Ball is for Griff to die. Maybe, but uh, I, I think it's to win, personally, for me. And uh, so what actually happens now is when you plant the bomb, it kind of dissolves in this magic whooshiness, and then it resets back at the center of the court. There's no going to black screen, there's no reestablishing of hosts, there's no more downtime. It is back there, so you have to be on top of it. Like, you can't just, you know, hang out and, and spawn kill as much as you might like, because you've got to go back and get the ball. Then again, if you've got someone in that position and picking up the ball, maybe you can just chuck it to the person sitting on the plant. So it really opens up the possibility for a lot of new positions and a lot of new tactics. And that's for me, is, is the most exciting thing, is the new strategies and tactics that are going to come out of this. Because you're going to have positions like quarterback. You're going to have plays like interceptions. I can already see people like setting up and having like playbooks like marathon runners used to do, used to do back in you know, the very, very early stages of Halo 3. So this is just, the, actually this was released uh, yesterday, this image right here. So that was perfect timing because we really didn't have a picture of anybody carrying the yacht ball yet. So we know he's not orange, please don't send us hate mail. Um, he will be though, or she yes. will be orange. Yes. 
Yeah, one of the great things about having Griffball on the disc in Halo 4 is that every single person who buys Halo 4 is going to already have a Griffball game type there in front of them in a map ready to use. You know, they're not going to have to wait a couple weeks for us to make it. They're not going to have to go to our file shares and download it. You know, as soon as you boot in your disc, you're going to have Griffball available right there. So it's exciting that instead of hundreds of thousands of people playing Griffball, we're going to have millions of people playing Griffball. That is very exciting. And since the game type is built as its own Griffball game type and not like on top of the old Assault game type, mm -hmm. there are a lot of settings in there. 343 has said there are a lot of settings that we'll be able to tweak unique to Griffball. So we're pretty excited about that too. Yeah, one of the issues people complain about a lot is connection issues. And one of the reasons that was so tough in Griffball is because it was built on the Assault game type. So basically they just kind of piled Griffball on top of it. Whereas in Halo 4, it is its own game type. You don't have any of that other code weighing it down. So it's a much cleaner, smoother game. I mean, we don't have RTDS anymore in Breach like we did in Halo yeah, 3. Yeah, there was a refusal to die syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah when, when, you, would, when you would stab somebody and they just kept on walking. They would not die. Yeah, yeah, that was good times. No, not really. It's potentially non-fatal. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of really exciting things for, for Griffball and Halo 4, and it's coming out very quickly, and we're very, very excited to get to share it with everybody and to get feedback. And I mean, I'm sure for the leagues, we'll probably make a couple tweaks here and there just to, for you know, competitive play aspects or whatever, but we're really hoping to keep it as true to what uh, they have, what 343 has right now. And I have to say that if auto pickup stays on, I'm lobbying it for it to be removed because as a tank, you're running down the court, you know, you got your hammer, you're running, and the, the bomber sees you, the bomber checks the, thor sort of, or checks the ball at you, and all of a sudden you automatically pick up the ball, so now I'm two feet from the runner and I can't do anything, and the runner kills me. Uh, the X runner I kills me. I have to say that as a runner, that sounds awesome. Yeah, well, as a tank, I don't, I don't think I like that. I don't like it either. Okay, see? <laughs> see, that's two. I like it. Ma I like it. Majority I like it. rules. Yeah. Majority rules. All right. So, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so we work with uh, doing some work, Griffball Hub, with 343 about Halo 4 Griffball, but we're still working on uh, Griffball and Halo Reach as well. And one of the things we do with Waypoint, uh, Halo Waypoint um, is a monthly highlight reel showcasing fabulous moves that people pull off in Griffball matchmaking playlist. Our, uh, the owner of Griffball Hub is also our video editor, a guy named H2O Camper, uh, and he's put together a highlight frenzy that we want to show you guys right here. <laughs> now imagine highlights like that, except you also can throw the ball around. And him right around. Yes. Yes, what we're really looking forward to in Halo 4. But yeah, we'll open it up to see if anybody has any possible questions about Griffball, Griffball Hug, Griffball in Halo 4, or anything just in general. Yeah? Do you know if there's going to be a way that uh, you can basically make the league within uh, tracking stats of uh, Halo 4, such that you can make like, a tournament bracket that's automatically updating? I mean, we don't know how they're going to do the API yet. We don't know if that's going to be publicly available. So things like pulling stats and auto-updating brackets and things like that, we, we don't know until they decide whether or not they're going to do a public API. And if they do, if it's going to have the kind of information in it that we would need to be able to pull to, to do that kind of thing. We hope they will. Although, uh, one thing we do know is that in Halo 3, there was a special medal you would get for killing someone who was carrying the bomb. That was very helpful for us keeping track of good defenders on Griffball. And in Halo Reach, we didn't have that medal anymore. It didn't make the transition. But we do know that in Halo 4, there will be a stat that tracks the number of times you kill the carrier. So if you're really good on defense, you can get your recognition. Yeah, so defenders will be happy. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, for the Wednesday night live stream, what time that is? Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. And we always tweet about it on our Twitter account, which, obviously enough, is Griffball Hub. Um, but sometimes we'll have earlier games, too. Like, our main event is 10 p.m. Eastern, but sometimes if other teams want to play as well, um, we've had it uh, go at 9 as well. Like, have a, a pre-show at 9 and then have the main event at 10. Yeah. How are you preparing for the fact that more people are probably going to get into the league? Like, are you going to have different levels of league? Like, pro, semi-pro, noobs? <laughs> we're praying. Yeah, we're hiring uh, masseuses. <laughs> We're starting to do our, trying to calm down. Thankfully, since I'm getting my degree in clinical psychology, um, we're we'll need that. do some nice guided <laughs> imagery, some relaxation, some deep breathing techniques. Uh, but, but honestly, we're, um, we have beefed up our staff 
we, we started out with maybe about three or four people, and at this point we're probably around 15 or 20 um, of just like moderators, people in the community, our welcome wagon, things like that. So we are bracing for impact should it explode the way that reached it for, for us. Um, as far as the leagues go, I think we're going to try and keep everybody in the same pool, at least for the first season, just because it is an all-new game. There's going to be all-new tactics. I mean, teamwork definitely is going to help experienced teams, but nobody knows how to defend against a cross-court pass. So, uh, but if, if we continue to have a large group and skill really does seem to be an issue, then um, there is a, a standard of breaking up pro and amateur or rookie and, and legacy um, to make sure that the rookies don't get smashed um, you know, every single time they play against somebody of their own skill level. Yeah? Um, so, like, after Halo 4 comes out, are you going to be still supporting Halo Reach curveball? Are you going to basically make the transition immediately and everyone's just going to be Halo 4 and everyone playing Halo Reach is just not going to... Yeah, you know, it's, we're, we're pretty much going to be almost entirely Halo 4 Griffball. Occas I mean, even now, though, occasionally we have, like, a Halo 3 night or we'll do a tournament or we'll do a Halo 3 play day and we'll go back and play Halo 3 Griffball. So I imagine that after Halo 4 comes out, We'll still do that occasionally with Reach. Maybe we'll play some vanilla Griff Ball or Griff Ball Dash once in a while. And it also kind of depends on what Waypoint does with Halo Reach, because if they still want us to look at maps and update the game types and upload new maps for them, obviously we'll continue to support that playlist as long as they want us to. Um, but as far as the leagues goes, you know, Cal's right on it. We'll, we'll be shifting completely to Halo 4 as much as possible. Just because in the past we, we did try having um, a Halo 3 league running at the same time as a Halo Reach league, and the people just dumped the Halo 3 League. Like, they just left it in the middle of a season to, to play Reach. Mm -hmm. So we're taking lessons learned from the past, and, you know, when people have a new game, that's what they want to play. Yeah, not everybody is quite as hardcore as some Griff Ballers, and we actually want to play a game that's five years old. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, well, if you think of one, feel free to ca find Cal and I. We're in the lovely Griff Ball Hub t-shirts. And uh, thank you guys so much for being such a great audience. We appreciate it.